Okay, uh, hi everybody. Hi, Joel. Hello. Hi. Um, we have a new release. And this time it is 128. So I'm here to tell you everything about the new stuff in this release. So let's start. Uh, we have five uh, chapters, mm -hmm. five segments for this presentation. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of demos today. So let's start right away with the first demo, which is a new VS Code extension update. OK. OK, so I'll actually share my screen. Uh, I forgot to share it beforehand. Is this because I asked for an extension update last time? Uh, no, doesn't have to do anything with your ask, but uh, you can say that <laughs> this. Well, thank you. <laughs> OK, do you see my screen? Mm -hmm. OK, so I have a VS Code here. Yeah. And I have some tests open inside the VS Code. Mm -hmm. And as usual, I can hit this green check mark to, to run this test. Yeah. And it will use the open browser, this satellite browser on my left hand side, to run the test. Mm -hmm. It happens very fast. So you see, it like, yeah. takes nothing to run it. Now, say, for example, I want to play with this test, mm -hmm. I want to actually uh, enhance it. Mm -hmm. So you do notice that the browser is actually stopped in the position after the last line of the test execution. OK. So what I can do, I can go and put my cursor somewhere here mm -hmm. and use this new record a cursor button mm -hmm. right here. So I'll click it. And I will do and, you know, buy some milk. Mm -hmm. Hit enter, and then I continue and I will check some of the items, actually all of them. And let's say this is good. Okay. So now with this functionality, I can actually, I actually have uh, oh. new code generated right in my test. Cool. Right here. That's very cool. Now, yes. So you can actually, oh, and I can run this test one more time. There is a command, mm -hmm. run test uh, at cursor, which is command, uh, semicolon, and C. Mm -hmm. That will run the whole thing one more time. And I see it passes actually, right? So I'll mm -hmm. run it one more time. Now, as I put my cursor inside these locators, let mm -hmm. me actually resize things. So you see the first three commands, I click, fill, and press enter. Yeah. And they all happened inside this uh, text field. And yeah. I can highlight this text field here. Mm -hmm. This is now highlighted on my page. Now let's look at this one list item. Yeah. This is a chain locator. It's pretty long, right? Yeah. So I can put my cursor on the first part of the chain locator, and it selects all the list items here. Mm -hmm. Then I can go ahead and click inside the filter, and it will select the one that's filtered, which is basically the first item, right? Right mm -hmm. here. And then I can go and hit, click my checkbox, and it will show me only the checkbox that is selected. Mm -hmm. So now this is how you can debug the locators. You can just click in different parts of the locator, and it will select and show you the thing on screen. OK. So these are the live locators, as we call now. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can basically debug and things. So for example, uh, these are actually live for a reason. I can mm -hmm. go ahead and edit it in place. Like, for example, instead of buy some cheese, I can say regex cheese. Right? And this is still the same cheese. What, what happens if it doesn't match anything? It doesn't show me anything. Okay. And so you delete it. Is empty. You make it match again? Yeah. Oh, very and nice. I can, oh, I can say cheese or milk, right? And it's like here. Very cool. So this is the new VS Code extension. The mm -hmm. new thing, which is very nice, is recorded cursor mm -hmm. and all the previous functionality is still there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back to our presentation. This was a demo. Yeah, no, that was very good. I didn't have any questions. It looks very straightforward. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a small recap. So mm -hmm. we have this new recorded cursor mm -hmm. uh, button. Moving on. So if you don't use VS Code extension, or if you prefer the terminal, mm -hmm. we have this inspector. Mm -hmm. It's called Playwright Inspector. And uh, there is an update there as well that I want to show you. Um, yeah. 
Oh, do you see my screen? Yeah. Terminal, right? I'll make it larger. Okay, I can run the inspector with this code gen command, and I will generate some tests for playwright.dev. Mm -hmm. So now I have my browser window, and here on the right hand side, let me zoom in our inspector window. Mm -hmm. So it is right now in the recording state. So let me turn this off. And now here we have this explore button. So I can now hit explore and select elements here and it will yield me an editable syntax highlighted locator for the element that was selected on the page. Mm -hmm. So again, um, yeah, for example, instead of a name, oh, let me actually pick something more complicated like this. This is a very, a very long name. So again, these are live locators. So I can actually go ahead and edit it and say you know, end to end. And this will select this thing for me as well. Mm -hmm. the screen. So this actually works across languages. So if I select, uh, you know, C sharp, for example, and I want to explore these locators, then it will generate a locator in a C sharp um, dialect. So mm -hmm. yeah, this is what it would look like. What are the options that we have there? Can you go back? So, okay, so C Sharp, all the different test runners. Yeah, different test runners. And then we have Python uh, library and async. Mm -hmm. And we have Java and we have Node.js test runner and the library. Mm -hmm. Cool. So and the Node.js, I can, it's, it's Python or JavaScript agnostic. Like there's no TypeScript annotations. Uh, you, you mean here? Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. Okay, um, one more thing, a small detail, but kind of important. Right here in the top right corner, we have this button. Mm -hmm. And this is basically now a dark theme support. Okay, does it, does it look at my system preference? Yes, it does, yes, it does, yes. Uh, because they need yes. a tri-state, so what's the, what, how do I get it to, to the three states? What is the th three states? Well, it's either, it's either force dark, force light, or system. Uh, actually, I think if you don't touch it, then this is system. Okay. And if you touch it, it becomes a... I, I will file a bug it? report. <laughs> Por favor. Yes. <laughs> okay. Moving back to our presentation. So this was the new stuff of the, the inspector demo. Mm -hmm. So we have this new thing, which is live locators. Uh, next up, snapshot path template. Now, um, snapshot testing is real, people do use it. And more and more people were actually asking for more flexibility in snapshot configuration, mm -hmm. like where to store snapshots. Well, now we have a one-stop shop. Uh, we have this snapshot path template, which lets you configure the place where the snapshots are actually stored. Cool. So here we have some example, and mm -hmm. let me actually break it down to the parts. Yeah. So this test gear is the directory where your tests live. Mm -hmm. So screenshots is just the name of the folder. Yeah. And then we have two specs, two suites here, A spec TS and B spec TS. Yeah. And this is the path of the spec. And we have the argument and the extension. Mm -hmm. So there are actually many more tokens than test gear and test file pass. This yeah, is say, uh, it's not enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 many different things. And actually, you can go and read with the examples everything about them in the documentation on playwright.dev. Mm -hmm. So please check it out. Um, wait, so would, would the browser name be in here? Well, usually the browser name is part of your project configuration. Oh, yes, the snapshot path template you can put as a project configuration option as well. I didn't follow that, sure. but... Uh, <laughs> so uh, as part of your... Uh, let me scroll back. Yeah. So right here, we have this option as part of the configuration. Right. Okay. And However, this is where I, I usually specify my browser. Yes. Yes. If you yeah. specify it at the same level as a project, then you can hard code yeah. the browser yeah, yeah, yeah. you want here. And this is you, how you can actually reuse the same snapshots. For example, if you have Chromium snapshots and, um, you know, Opera snapshots or Microsoft Edge snapshots, yeah. you can reuse them by reusing the same uh, location for the browser. Cool. Oh, okay, cool. So I can, so before I would have different uh, folders for all of my snapshot yes. locations yes. and now yes. I can merge them together so that I don't have yes. 
for for Chromium based browsers, I probably want the same snapshots. Precisely. Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay. Moving forward. Okay, uh, miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. So we have a bunch of new APIs. We mm -hmm. you can now configure retries and timeout per test suite or actually test file. Mm -hmm. We have a, a little bit of new APIs for locator. Locator blur blurs it, and locator dot clear clears the input field. Clears we have the two new APIs field. for yeah. So if input field has some text inside of it, you can clear it up. Um, I have questions about clear. <laughs> sure. Uh, so. I actually, first, I have questions about blur. What does blur do? Uh, blur blurs the element. So it basically yeah. moves the focus to the body element. It moves the focus to the body. It is the same as element blur in web API. OK, OK. But it doesn't, it doesn't blur the window. It does not blur the window. OK, cool. Um, it okay so it, it, does it literally call element.blur? Yes. OK. Um, and then clear, uh, what elements does clear work on? It's input elements. So the same as fill, basically clear is a shortcut for fill with empty string. Got it. Okay. So so you can do content editable. You can do, uh, it works on text like area. labels yes. and yes. text areas. Yes. Okay. Precisely. Um, does it, what else can you fill? Can you fill uh, uh, select elements? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Um, Two new options for Android APIs. Um, this comes without comments. I, I, I never use the Android API. I, I, yes, I hope these uh, are good for people. <laughs> these are still experimental. And last but not least, now we have the dark theme support for both Inspector and Trace Viewer. So Trace Viewer now has this uh, dark theme switch as well. Cool. And last but not least, very important announcements. Mm -hmm. And we have only one announcement this time, mm -hmm. which is Ubuntu 18 will be uh, dropped. Basically, this is the last release that supports Ubuntu 18. Okay. And this was deprecated as of uh, Playwright 125. And finally, we are heading towards December. And December will not be, uh, in December, we will not support Ubuntu 18, basically. Okay. So people are on Ubuntu 18. What should they do? Uh, they should either update Ubuntu 18 to Ubuntu 20, or they should fix the Playwright version to 128 and do not update the version anymore. Okay. So they can, so they stay on 128. Um, what they'll they'll miss new features? Can they still use newer browsers? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, you can technically you can install Google Chrome from mm -hmm. a stable channel, but uh, we will not be able to support the dependency installation. We will not. We will stop testing of Ubuntu eighteen and our browser builds as well. We will okay. not ship our browser builds for Ubuntu eighteen as well. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, recap. So 128, a new VS Code extension, uh, updated Playwright Inspector, a new configuration option for your snapshots, uh, a bunch of new APIs for locators, Android, and uh, Test Runner, mm -hmm. and uh, important announcement: uh, Ubuntu 18 will be uh, end of life in, in December. Great. Uh, this is it. Thank yeah. you, Joel. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yeah, I'll see you at 129. Uh, see you one to nine. Yes. And when when are we ever gonna do two? Is it is it? Are we gonna get up to one nine nine or never never? <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks.